You know, when I was a kid, first reading comic books, all I knew about cosmic stuff was that the Silver Surfer could navigate the stellar winds or ride on the shock wave of an exploding supernova or that four astronauts took off in a spaceship that proved to have inadequate shielding, uh, encountered a cosmic ray storm, were bathed in the radiation, transmuted, and became the Fantastic Four. I think this is when physics first sounded cool to me. But what are these cosmic rays? I've got an instrument up here in the front of the room. This panel, which is really nothing more than a clear piece of lucite doped with a fluorescent material. And then looking into it from the top is a light sensitive instrument being read out by the oscilloscope, whose traces you see dancing on the screen right now. Every time a charged particle, a piece of radiation, passes through and excites the fluorescent atoms in this plant, this, this panel here, we register a trace on the oscilloscope. Now you can try to uh, count how many times you see that trace redrawn, but maybe not. Uh, luckily, I got something that's telling me 50, 60, 20, 40 hertz per second. Dozens, if not hundreds of times a second, a piece of radiation is going through this panel. Uh, none of us present much smaller size to the sky than the panel. And as you sit there, hundreds of times every second, a charged piece of radiation passes through you. Some of it may be due to the trace radioactive materials in this brand new building, but most of the particles passing through you are cosmic ray particles whose origin is outer space. That was established 100 years ago when Victor Hess took some instrumentation, not this kind of stuff, but a simpler thing to measure radiation in a balloon and found that as you go above 150 meters or so, the rate of radiation starts to increase, suggesting that a lot of the radiation we're exposed to isn't coming from the Earth after all. It doubled when he went from one to four kilometers up and kept continuously increasing from them. From there, that's radiation whose origin is in fact outer space. In the 50s, it was confirmed by satellites that some of that radiation is trapped in belts around the Earth, the Van Allen radiation belts, by the Earth's own magnetic field. And supposedly it was that that the Fantastic Four had passed through. Some fortuitous balloon flight experiments that happened to coincide with solar flare activity confirmed that a lot of that radiation comes from the sun or from any star from the sky that flares up once in a while. Here's an interesting article from Nature just a few years ago. It's explaining what had already been known for decades. Jack Kirby drew the Fantastic Four in a spaceship with these visible blobs of particles coming through the walls of the spaceship and passing through them. You can't see that. Well, except that the astronauts, when they closed their eyes, could see flashes. And the flashes were like the signal being detected by my light sensitive instrument looking in on that plastic, is a reaction of the charged particles passing through the vitreous solution of the eyeball. Luckily, because I don't want you to be too weirded out by what I just told you a few moments ago, the cosmic rays pass through us harmlessly thousands of times per second. And the whole human race has coexisted with that kind of background radiation for a long time. And in fact, don't think you need to shield yourself from the cosmic rays of the sky because already, a thousand times a second, radiation, charged particles, from within pass through your body, do through the carbon-14 and the potassium-40 that you ingest when you eat and you breathe all the time. So thousands of times per second, stuff's coming from the outside. Thousands of times per second, things are coming from the inside, just bathing us with that background. But luckily, 
They usually pass through materials. These are things that are, after all, subatomic in size. They're smaller than the space between atoms. They can pass through walls, for goodness sake. They pass through you harmlessly, doing often little more than tickling the atoms that they go by. By tickling, I mean they excite the electrons in the atoms. For the most part, that's all that ever happens. We're two-thirds water, so the cosmic ray background radiation is basically a do, it is, explains the pH balance of our body. Well, for the most part, they pass harmlessly through. What if they don't slip through the space between atoms and they actually have a collision course with one of them? The odds of that are astronomically small and yet could happen. But, you know, your body's a complicated system. You're made up of organs built of tissues comprised of cells. You've got over 75 trillion cells in your body. You've got more than 10,000 times Avogadro's number's worth of atoms in your body. If once in a great while one of them gets clobbered by a cosmic ray, who'd notice? Every time you scratch your cheek, bite your tongue, skin your elbow, bang your knee, you kill hundreds if not thousands or tens of thousands of cells. Your body just flushes them out. And in fact, you're doing that all the time to a tune of about a million times per second, just the rate at which cells age and are fortunately replaced. How often, so if the damage is rare, and if it damages a cell, who would notice? That doesn't stop you from drinking, has it? How often might that damage, though, produce a mutation? And how often would that mutation be harmful or beneficial? Well, it's estimated that when mutations do occur, when a cell is damaged in a way that you'd define as a mutation, that it's only a small fraction to begin with that might be harmful, but an even smaller fraction that would be beneficial. And if I ask the question, how often would something really cool happen, like your cells be able to spontaneously burst into flame or stretch, that must be, I guess, much smaller. Besides, 98% of mutations are utterly neutral. You can't even tell anything happened when they occur. All right, perhaps thousands of times a second, cosmic rays are passing through you all the time. There's always a chance you will grow up with mutant powers tomorrow when you wake up. If you pass through the Val and Allen radiation belts, well, more like 15 million times a second. So, Fantastic Four pass through the Van Allen radiation belts. You've got 75 trillion cells in your body. How long an exposure would it take to have all of your cells uniformly illuminated or bathed in radiation to give each one of them a chance to mutate? Well, I'll take the number of cells divided by that rate, and I'll find out uh, you've got to soak in there for about an hour and a half. Ah, but they went up when there was a cosmic storm, perhaps a solar flare. And it's true, when that happens, perhaps a 1,000 or 10,000 times higher rate of radiation would be due. It's possible that in about four or five seconds, maybe you could get that kind of dosage. But what would guarantee that every cell that had a cosmic ray passed through it ended up in having that cell damaged in some cool way? And not only that, every one of them to be mutated into uh, the new power of stretchiness, for example. Okay, not very likely, 